everybody. Welcome back to the Square the Circle music channel. It's me, your pal, your host, Aaron Major. That's right. I'm that weird looking fella over in Western Oregon that likes to talk about music appreciation, record collecting, all that uh, wonderful spirited shit. So it's been a while. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot. It's been, uh, it's been nice. It's been summer. Finally got a chance to like hike my kids up into the mountains and we got to go do some camping and some swimming and all of that fun stuff. You know, lots of time spent in the garden. Uh, got a new friend, invited a new friend to come live with us here in the, you know, the Square of the Circle Music Channel studio <laughs> in Springfield, Oregon. Uh, found myself a parakeet. It was flying around, around the grounds and it was, you know, in distress. It was dehydrated and probably starving and just kind of hopping along and uh, one of the other guys on the property saw it and said, hey, you know, we, we, we tried to figure out what we were going to do with it and <laughs> lucky me. Um, but it's been really fun. The kids enjoy it. And um, so if you guys hear any uh, chirps and warbles coming out of the other room, that's old Blue. Yeah, he's a little sweet. So um, he's going to be joining us every week on <laughs> these episodes. You're definitely going to hear him. I'm not the type to um cage a bird so he just flies around but he stays in the kitchen sometimes he'll come and land right here on these plants uh but yeah it's been fun so hey what are we going to talk about tonight guys let's talk about music shall we we don't want to talk about my ridiculous personal bullshit um i like to do this episode at least once every week if i can sometimes once every two weeks things are getting a little bit um less affordable and a little more you know kind of uh hard to find, picked over, so to speak. So I'm going to do my uh, thrift store, junks, you know, junk bin, free pile kind of thing that I like to do. I like to call it Tales from the Thrift. And I always, you know, I do my best to come across some pretty great shit for you so, to show you guys. So um, let's check it out, shall we? Um, didn't find any cassettes again this week. Man, everyone's really like honed in on the cassettes for some reason because they're like, still four and five for a buck you know sometimes clean ones sound pretty all right and um yeah portable pretty fun me and the boy we went camping and then we took his little boom box and a uh, little tape case and had like 20 different tapes that we could listen to while we were camping it was pretty fun so unfortunately I didn't find any of those but i found some pretty dope cds so i'm going to show you guys my cds what did I find? Let's see if I can remember. Uh, of course, yes. I've had this album many, many, many times. I've had it on vinyl. I've had it uh, in every format. Honestly, I think I even had it on cassette for a short while when it first came out. Um, I was a little slow on the draw. I heard this album for the first time maybe like 2003. Um, it had come out in 2001. But uh, yeah, I had that on cassette. It was a sub-pop release by the first, the first album by the band The Shins. Uh, oh, Inverted World. Everyone remembers this one. It had that really famous song that was on that stupid soundtrack, some dumb movie that I never watched. Don't care. You know, I was like 21 when this came out. So I was, this was my first real like step into kind of the new sound, you know, like I had been listening to alternative artists with that kind of different sound that I was really latching onto that lo-fi sound because everything else I listened to was like really like, digitally heavily produced and just gorgeous sounding and then suddenly the world slaps you across the face and it's like oh that's what you're into now <laughs> you know <laughs> fuck off with you steve albinis and you <laughs> you know bob ludwigs and whatever else we just want the stuff that sounds sonically fucking awful but the music and the poetry and everything that sub pop was putting out there in the late 90s into the early uh early aughts i guess you could say was pretty dope um but yeah, I really love the Shins, especially their second album, um, Shoots Too Narrow. That was fantastic. That was, I think that's how I discovered them, actually. And then I backpedaled and discovered this. But I love this album. Come across it for a buck. Yeah, I'll own it again. There's a couple songs that just drop me to my knees. I love that one, the, um, the second track. Um, what is it? One by One All Day. Uh, the final track on the album. Um, the Past and Pending, when it, like... It's just this really like, you know, somber guitar ballad and all of a sudden like a French horn comes out of nowhere. And like I said, man, that, that kind of shit, it drops me to my knees every time. 
What a wonderful album. Lovely album by The Shins. Everybody check it out. Um, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I found a copy of Faith No More's... What did they title this album? The Real Thing. Uh, Faith No More's The Real Thing. Like 1991, right? Um, oh, even earlier. 1989. This was the big hit album. You know, it has the epic song and they do the cover of War Pigs and just, yeah. This was the one that was just like on repeat in the ref's tower at the paintball arenas and, you know, all around town in 1992. Um, it was fucking great. I love this album. Mike Patton is a, you know, an epic uh, folk hero, you know, in the music industry. Um, pretty special album. Really glad to have that again. I'm like, I actually, honestly, I don't think I've ever owned that album. It's probably the first time I've ever owned a physical copy of that album. Speaking of physical uh, physical copies of albums, uh, this is one that I've honestly, I've not needed to have in my collection for the last 20 years. For obvious reasons, I love it to death. I respect the band for what they were, but honestly, I'm getting so fucking sick of just like having Kurt Cobain and his legacy just being like, like in my, in our faces just constantly. Um, one of the o most overrated artists of all time um, always rubbed me the wrong way, honestly. As an artist, like as a as a kind of a personal entity, Kurt Cobain just always just, it reminded me of all those like obnoxious, spoiled little shit kids bumming around the neighborhood, just like little fuckers that you just wanted to slap around, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, he made a couple really fucking good albums, Incesticide and Nevermind. Um, is where it just kind of began and ended for me. Didn't care for In Utero very much, just immediately got uh, horribly sick of it and didn't really care much for it. But this one I can still listen to. Um, I haven't really been able to much for the last 20 years because it's fucking everywhere. I mean, I haven't owned a copy probably since like, I don't know, since the early aughts, you know, maybe since I was in college or whatever. But, you know, I had this original on tape and on cassette tape and, you know, this the seventh grade. And so... Yeah, first time of having a copy of this in a really long time. So, got Nirvana's Nevermind in my collection again for a dollar. Um, this was dope. Fuck, I couldn't believe. Um, never see these in the wild ever. Modesky Martin and Wood. Love Modesky Martin and Wood. Discovered these guys when I was in college, and um, I was drumming in college. I drummed for the University of Oregon. I did um, a transfer program. I went to City College. Couldn't afford the university, didn't have good enough grades to get any scholarship money to go to the university. <laughs> but I was really good at music, and I wanted to do some type of, like, transfer program. They did have a transfer program so I could play in the marching band. I got to play in the University of Oregon marching band. I was the center snare drummer, uh, section leader, uh, for the drum line for, like, at least, like, two or three years from 1998 to... Well, I wasn't center in 98. I was a freshman. I was just a kid. But... By the next year, I think, yeah, by 99, I was center snare, section leader, head of the drum line, did that for a couple years, did uh, drum corps, like a international drum corps. Anyway, I'm, I'm gabbing. Sorry, guys. That's when I discovered these guys, because I was really, I was hip. <laughs> I was the coolest fucking guy around. Yeah, I listened to Modesty Martin Wood. Like, fuck you, who are you, you know? Yeah, they're great. Jazz, just kind of neo-jazz killer trip hop grooves love the shit out of these guys one of the best trios ever to exist in the world of rock slash jazz slash fusion um the last cd i found which <laughs> is a super awesome bundle deal i can't i can't believe i found this for five dollars this was the most expensive thing i bought <laughs> in the last couple of weeks one thing for five bucks but dude it's a fucking cash collection a three disc cash collection you can't see it that way <laughs> um in magnificent shape all of his songs about love god and murder <laughs> is that what it is yeah murder i was gonna say killing but yeah i think they yeah <laughs> murder love god and murder pretty fucking cool in absolutely magnificent condition beautiful art on them and they're loaded with all kinds of cool info and pictures and uh little bits and pieces about the songs listed it has the original it has stick on tattoos holy shit guys really neat really cool this was put out by uh un-american records uh 99 uh 2000 in the year 2000 so it was uh 
just before he passed, right? When did Johnny Cash go? When did he pass? It was like 2003 or 2004, something like that. I'm a bad fan. Sorry, everybody. But that is wicked cool for five bucks, right? I already have tons of Johnny Cash in my vinyl collection, but I don't have any cash in my car. So now I can listen to the immortal sounds of the man in black in my vehicle. Uh, pretty fun stuff. So I was excited about that. There's the CDs I got. Like I said, I didn't get any cassette tapes, audio cassette tapes, but I did manage to pick up some video cassette tapes, uh, some VHS, because I do collect that too. And I know this is a music channel, everybody. Chill the fuck out. But we show all kinds of just fun collectibles, memorabilia, uh, stuff, kitsch, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, two fantastic VHS cassettes that I picked up, um, both for a buck. Soup got really lucky because these are uh, really popular films too. Both kind of in the comedy slash uh, cult classic slash, uh, uh, I guess they're not, yeah, they're not horror films, but whatever. Um, sometimes people put them in the horror section. It's kind of bizarre. Um, love these films first of course <laughs> beetlejuice uh the immortal classic of beetlejuice michael keaton yeah gina davis alec baldwin went on a rider like holy shit <laughs> this was you know danny elfman composed music and uh what's his weirdo but that does all the films um why can't i remember his name right now anyway old edward scissorhands himself fuck what is his name the yeah epic filmmaker anyway Tim Burton, sorry. Yes, Tim Burton's Immortal Classic Beetlejuice. Stoked to have that in my VHS collection. And one from my childhood. Again, from my childhood as well. I can't believe I was watching that film when I was eight years old. Nine, that came out in like 88, right? Yeah, so, and we watched it when I was like eight years old, nine years old. Loved it. I'd say these days, maybe a little inappropriate for an eight-year-old in most parts, but whatever, dude. It was the 80s. Um love that fucking film this one too grew up on this grew up in the theater so this was like you know this was meat and potatoes this was staple uh in my family we watched it almost fucking religiously like almost once a week this was like getting slapped into the player because we just loved every minute of little shop of horrors yeah rick moranis i mean all those like canadian cats that were huge in um the comedy scene in the 70s and 80s so like bill murray does a little cameo spot and who else does a cameo spot whatever you know like i said rick moranis steve martin um god there's a hundred of them why can't i think of all the other fantastic cameos but yeah this this movie's just loaded with them i can never remember the woman's name too that plays audrey uh anyway she's fantastic the, oh uh, jim belushi uh comes in at one point doesn't he yeah, man. What a fantastic film. Anyway, love Little Shop of Horrors. Really excited to have this back in my collection. I'm going to show this one to my kids immediately. My daughter's 12, and she desperately needs to see this because she loves the macabre so much. She's so into, like, you know, she Stranger Things and everything. Yeah, so my daughter will love this. I'm very excited about that. Okay, guys, sorry about all the rambling. That was only, like, a couple minutes, 12 minutes, whatever. That's my, my dorky shit. Now you want to see the vinyl records. I know. You, we'll get it to it here. Uh, thanks again for hanging out with me, guys. You can visit me on Instagram. I'm Square the Circle Records on Instagram. And I've been kind of lame the last couple of weeks. I haven't really been posting very much. Sorry. Summertime, fun time, man. I'm just kind of like, you know, getting a, getting a sunburn on my brain, cooking my brains. That's what I do in the summer. I'm fucking exhausted. <laughs> but we have fun. That's what we do around here at Square the Circle Music Channel. We have fun. Here's all the really cool vinyl records I got, guys. This one, I've never seen this. Don't know what it's about. It's just another one of those mixed bag, kind of like, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Looks like it could be like some blues rock, something. I don't know. I like the art. I like the dis display. Sometimes I buy, you know, I still have a few honey holes, guys. There's a little place, a couple places that I go around town that I've found that a lot of collectors and, and grabbers and, and sifters um, that they don't really know about, you know. And I'm kind of one of those crazy old prospector gold guys up in the hills. Like, I know where the little honey pots are. I find these for a dollar still some places. But a lot of them aren't, like, you know, crazy awesome hits. But never heard of this. Tin Huey. Album's called Contents Dislodged During Shipment. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I really loved the art and design and the color scheme. These guys looked like they were having, having a lot of fun making their music whenever it was, like I said, probably late 70s. Um, but yeah, on the Warner label. Never heard of them. Pretty cool. I'm for Akron. Ohio band.
cool. Uh, of course, saw the art, saw the name, flipped it over <laughs> and saw the dude that I know the name associated with. And I was like, okay, I got to have this for a dollar. Uh, Carrie Livgren, right? He was the keyboardist for uh, in Kansas, wasn't he? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Super cool looking dude. <laughs> anyway, magnificent keyboardist. And he, he composed a lot of the most, um, you know, some of the most uh, memorable moments in Kansas music history. I'm sure he was responsible for a lot of those like fantastic melodies. Kansas was known for that. You'd be rocking around, you know, this crazy like Southern blues prog sound and just kind of like, you know, meat and potatoes, rock and roll style. And then suddenly you'd just be kind of like cut scene, boom. And they'd just go into like this kind of like Rick Wakeman wannabe you know, prog man of sequin cape kind of thing. Anyway, his fucking crazy 70s haircut. And this is his solo stuff. What's it called again? Uh, Seeds of Change. Seeds of Change by Carrie Livgren. Uh, I'm excited to get a heavy dose of this. It's going to be cool. Yeah, Magnificent Condition. Um, Kirshner Records. Never seen or listened to anything on Kirshner records. I've seen this label before, so yeah, I guess I have, but oh, more uncommon, kind of a small-time label that I've never really heard of. Whatever. That'll be fun. Try to get a little bit quicker pace here. i got a lot of stuff, guys. got a lot of really cool stuff. It's been about 10 or so days, right, since I've done this episode, so I, I saved up a pretty cool pile of shit. This was like, I couldn't believe it was only $3. Um, but yeah, it's a sub-pop release just kind of a little lesser known excited to check it out it's called thumpers yeah album's called galore you know just kind of like weird middle period in the last 10 15 years a lot of music <laughs> we've all we've all been subject to a lot of saturation uh and uh whatever what's one more sub pop band i can adjust i can ingest some more <laughs> i'll check it out it should be cool um Something I am not familiar with. Looks beautiful. Uh, Mid-80s, late-80s maybe. Um, so we're getting kind of that... Uh, I'm getting some vibe of kind of like dream pop. Kind of shoegazy. Kind of mixed with some goth elements from this. Should be cool on Geffen Records. Band called Lone Justice. Or maybe that's the album title. Um, fuck me. Have no idea. I don't know if the band is called Lone Justice or if the album's called Lone Justice, or if it's Shelter. Maybe the band is called Shelter. No idea. Produced by Little Steven? Oh, and Lone Justice. So that is the name of the band, Lone Justice. And the album is called Shelter. It's beautiful art. I like it. Fucking dollar. One dollar, who cares? I'll check it out. I'm sure it's great. Oh, <coughs> yeah, here's one that popped up in the bag. For a dollar that I couldn't pass up because, uh, for two reasons. <laughs> the first reason was from the heart, okay? I really give a shit. I do. Uh, my little sister, she's not really little. She's, you know, my 40-year-old sister with a family of her own. Anyway, <laughs> she has just, not really recently, but she's kind of like, Aaron, it's so cool. Like, get me into it, you know? So I'm getting in, I'm trying to get her into um, record collecting. And she's always, we've always had, you know, very, very similar tastes in music. We're very close in age. We're not even two years apart. I have two sisters and we're like Irish triplets. We're all like, we were all born within the same, what would that be? Like three year period, basically. Three and a half, four year period, <laughs> almost. 1979 to 1981. Or 1978 to 1981. So, yeah, like I said, Scottish triplets is what we be. Um, anyway, this one's for my sister. I found it for her. It's, you know, I've always had it in my collection. I love it to death. And this is something I think my sister would really fucking love. So I had to pick this up for her. I'm trying to get her into Prague more. Because I think she would really dig it if she would just kind of get past some of the goofier, frumpier, you know, colorful moments that we, guys like you and me and girls like everybody that, you know, loves these frumpy moments. Um, anyway, my sister would really dig the shit out of this. So I got this for her. Merm, this is for you. Uh, got you a copy of Renaissance's Ashes Are Burning Away. Um, 1972, right? Something like that. Anyway, a really magnificent copy. And like I said, I did it for her because I love her. And I was thinking of her, but I was also being selfish, thinking of myself. I managed to pull out the inner sleeve to this. Is Mine was torn and fucked up, and I got the original inner. And it was in really nice condition, so... I kept the original inner, Miriam. I'm going to give you the shitty torn up one. <laughs> but yeah, my sister gets a copy of uh, Ashes Are Burning Now.
for cheap. This looked beautifully cool. I love the art. I don't listen to surf rock or surf music or anything like that from like the 50s and 60s, but um, <laughs> just I, I love the uh, cover art and I'm sure it's some magnificent music, so it should be fun. Uh, drag race at Surf City. Yeah, let's get there. There they go. Vroom, vroom. Heading down to the beach. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Cool art, though. I like it. Rod and the Cobras. Cool. High Fidelity. Somerset Records. Some classic Americana right here. That's pretty cool. Pretty good. Pretty damn good condition. See those smudges there? Those will buff right out. Just They're just smudges. They're just like kind of dirty finger smudges. Those will buff right out in the old uh, MK2, whatever it's called, spin clean machine. <laughs> um, I got some really dope um, uh, classical. I do love classical, and I only buy the stuff that's like wicked clean, um, that are you know great hits by you know well known artists, artists that I know. As long as it has beautiful cover art as well, photography and. You know, art and stuff, it's a huge part of why I collect. It, a very, very huge part of why I collect. Um, and this was just stunning. Photography on a Debussy collection. A bunch of beautiful Debussy hits. And I just, yeah, so stunning. I used to fancy myself a little bit of a, you know, novice photographer. Back when you actually had to, you know, spend some time in the darkroom and learn how to do the shit. Um, it's pretty cool. And so snapping photogs these days is still pretty fun to do with your phone and, and all that. The technology is incredible, but I love me some classic BMW. Yeah, like the Connoisseur Society pressed this for me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's gorgeous. Got some more WC. The only WC that I had before was that hilarious um, mock up that uh, Isayo Tomita did for us. The uh, the Gollywogs Cakewalk and all that stuff. I've highlighted that before. Snowflakes Are Dancing. That's the name of the album. The Debussy album that Tomita did. So now I have some actual <laughs> tried and true Debussy in my collection. Oh, I forgot about this. Fuck yeah. Um, I can't even figure out how to pronounce it because I don't understand Gaelic. But Gaelic is a really intriguing, amazing language. Uh, na Kabarfeed? Na Kabarfeed. I don't know how to say anything in the Celtic language, but that's the name of the group. And the album's called Stick It In Your Ear. Stick It In Your Ear. And I picked this up. I was like, okay, that looks amazing looking at the art. You got the Piper playing in his ear and everything. It's super cool. And the Piper's some kind of like fucking demon or whatever. I was like, this is going to be cool. I flip it over. Look at some names. I'm like, late 70s? What is this? And I look at the names and I'm like, Patrick O'Gorman and Greer Coppins. I know those names. Why do I know those names? Because I'm a super fucking dork. <laughs> I'm a dork to the, the, the most extreme. Yeah, so those guys are co-founders of another band that I discovered in the early 90s because my mother used to take me to this fantastic music store in Eugene at the Fifth Street Market that it was like, it was an imports store. So they had it was all music though. It was a mu it was a just import record store. It was fucking amazing. And my mom loved that place because that's what I grew up on, you know? And I she would let me pick up cheap shit and I'd pick up tapes, you know, and I picked up two tapes by this band called Rare Air. They're a Canadian like, you know, Celtic mixed with pop music, mixed with Americana, mixed with all kinds of really cool shit. They're from like they're from like Ottawa or some shit, but there's like Highland bagpipes and penny whistles and, but like fusion bass guitar and drum set and guitar and shit. It's like, it's crazy fusion jazz pop electron, electro mixed with like fucking Celtic music. <laughs> so it, I don't know, right up my fucking alley is what it is. And I discovered these guys from some late seventies band that they had and I couldn't believe it. And it's just magnificent. Um, yeah. So it's, um, a band again I can't pronounce. There it is right there. Na Cabarafid. Uh Yeah, some super obscure 70s um, folk pop Celtic music. Really fucking cool. And they happen to have, I think, a Korean or Chinese uh, guitar player. <laughs> oh, Canada. Fucking cool place, man. Just as cool as America. I mean, it is America, whatever. Um, 
Yeah, Bob Yon is his name. Super cool. Very excited about this one. Love Tinkle Tunes. I love dork music. I grew up on this stuff. This was always on in the house when I was growing up. Yanni. I love Yanni. Look at that art. <laughs> it's so fucking cool. My mom had like all of his albums. All of them. Look at Yanni. Those, those locks of his. Oh, he's just banging away at the piano. Get anyone's knees shaking. Speaking of banging away at the piano, God bless this man. Hooray for the immortal Ray Charles. Found a Beautiful, like absolutely practically mint copy of Renaissance. Look at that, dude. Fucking royalty. Cracking that egg. Fucking royalty, man. One of the greatest things to ever grace this planet is Ray Charles. For three bucks. <laughs> I win. Uh, oh, here is a chunk from the free bin. <laughs> I got a bunch of great shit from the free box, man. It happens all the time, and um, I always pick it just, you know, they can't resell that stuff when it has just, like, stupid minor shit like this. And, of course, I'm never taking garbage, guys. I, I know how to inspect my records. <laughs> Definitely not a fucking bush leaguer. You know, everything I get is always in fantastic condition and has nothing any more than just a few finger, you know, oil smudges, and they clean up nicely. Yeah, so I have this stupid Jimmy Buffett album with Margaritaville on it. What is it? Attitudes, the changes in added changes in latitudes, changes in attitudes <laughs> with our man, <laughs> Jimmy Buffett. I have a fantastic uh, Jimmy Buffett story that actually has nothing to do with meeting the man, Jimmy Buffett. But I did hang out with Jimmy Buffett one summer, all weekend, and I got to see him perform on stage. And it was one of the most entertaining shows I've ever attended. We'll talk more about that some other time. I love me a good, healthy, healthy dose of Outlaw Country. Um, I, this is kind of new for me. Not really in the way of like Cash and Willie Nelson and Chris, Christopherson and stuff, but I'm just recently getting into like, I really am liking Waylon Jennings a lot. And even the, the women of, you know, modern country from like, you know, 60s 70s 80s uh jesse coulter is gorgeous anyway yeah this you know free and it's in fantastic condition i'm gonna get some enjoyment out of this outlaws album with all of said musicians that i just mentioned uh, yeah iconic album everyone's seen this in free bins forever but it's a really magnificent copy so i'm gonna get some enjoyment out of that i'm gonna get some enjoyment out of this i always get enjoyment out of this album a greatest hits album by of course ELO. ole ELO, and uh some of their most Incredible songs. A lot of them. Really great. And I don't have a ton of ELO in my collection. I really, I only have El Dorado and Time. And I think that's it. And so this is a lot of stuff from like their second and third album. There's one from El Dorado. One from, you know, Face the Music. Yeah. So there's a lot of great shit on here that I'll uh, definitely dig. I love this. I love the cover. <laughs> the cover is fantastic. Yeah. Kind of a ripoff of kind of like what Floyd did. But um, maybe this is even like some Hypnosis album art. Kind of looks like something done by Hypnosis Art Collective. Cool. Uh, well, guys, I got so much stuff here. I'm just going on and on and on. Um, another anthology um, collection of stuff that I just, I can't turn away when it's only a buck. Because um, I've never seen this. It's neat. Just kind of a weird independent pressing. Um, that looks kind of cool. And it's just like classic, you know, again, Americana and country, rock, you know, a Billy. Uh, it's got some Everly Brothers. Um, the stuff that I enjoyed, I, I listened to this already. There's a bunch of Everly Brothers songs I've never heard, which is cool. Because it's from the, they, they explain all about it here. Like I said, this is like a weird, like, private issue. Someone that just bought up rights to, like, these random fucking songs that never made it on albums that nobody knows from... The latter part of these guys' career this is like recorded by the everly brothers in the late 70s early 80s some of them i think and a lot of other fantastic songs who does that barbara keith is her name does a couple songs on here anyway yeah it's really cool silver meteor <laughs> it's really cheesy dorky art but yeah who would imagine that this would be kind of like a you know americana country rock album <laughs> silver meteor um yeah, pretty cool. I, you know, Silver Meteor is a, uh, a name, a nickname for uh, a train, isn't it? Yeah. They call the newfangled, you know, new trains. They call them Silver Meteors, right? 
whatever. Um, some more interesting stuff that I've just never seen. So I instinctively just kind of like, if it's a dollar, I buy it. If it's something I've never seen, because I've been digging for records, like, for quite some time. Um, yeah, the Steve Gibbons Band. I looked it up. It's nothing, nothing extraordinary. And I did listen to it quite a bit, too. It's good. They're, they're a good band for you folks that like just kind of like garden variety blues rock. It's definitely for you. Uh, not necessarily for me, but I'll give it a try a few more times. And, you know, if it's not tickling my fancy in another week's time, I'll sell it at a record shop. Um, came across a free copy of Super Tramps, even in the quiet moments. Yeah. Give a little bit of my love to you. <laughs> it's a good album. Glad to have it. People are going to think I'm really weird for this, but I've never listened to this album. Ever. Yeah. So, I'm going to listen. I mean, of course I know Baby I Love Your Way. I mean, everyone knows that song, but um, I've never just, like, sat down and listened to any Frampton Comes Alive. Ever. Um, looks cool. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's worth a listen. So, I'll get a... I'll get some loving out of it. Um, funny story, because of course, you know, my mother had this. And the cover always looked um, so much like the, uh, and, and you know, like I said, I was raised in the uh, the theater. My mother was really in the musical theater. Um, and this looked so much like so many epic covers to albums that I'd seen before. So I just associate, I thought this guy was, this guy was like Jesus Christ, you know, because <laughs> it looks exactly like, you know, like the Jesus Christ superstar thing and like Godspell. It looks like the guy from Godspell who was in the Godspell movies. And um, it even looked like, you know, the cover art from the album, the, the uh, if anyone's familiar with musical theater, uh, of course, the, the king godhead of musical theater, Stephen Sondheim, rest his soul, we just lost um, one of America's greatest artists of all time. Stephen Sondheim did the lyrics to a show called The Follies. And this looks just like kind of like the stoic, like, you know, Christ-like, you know, face. <laughs> Whatever, I'm rambling again. Frampton comes alive. Now I have a copy of that. This is fucking amazing. I couldn't believe I found this for three dollars. Three fucking dollars. It's in fantastic shape. There is some pretty mondo surface. I wouldn't say surface noise. It's just constant slight crackle. And if you turn it up, it's so funky and the fidelity is still, it's really good enough that um, the constant kind of like simmer of, you know, bacon sizzling in the pan uh, isn't too bad. It doesn't bother me too much um, on that really cool like soul label. Wasn't this like kind of like an offshoot of um, Motown? Maybe? I don't know. Um, J. R. Walker. Is it Junior Walker? Do they call him Junior? I thought it was J. R. Walker. I don't know. Sorry, guys, it's either Junior Walker or J.R. Walker and the All-Stars and his album, Rainbow Funk. Look at that. Isn't that fucking amazing? And I've already spun it. It's really great. It's really great. I love it. Yeah, just like really cool early R&B funk. Look at this, dude. Excited to be here. He's really excited to be here. <laughs> and it shows on this album. It's really magnificent. Couldn't believe I found that for him. $3.00. Really neat album. Um, of course, just kind of big hits by the band Journey, you know. Got it. What's this album called? Escape or something like that? Or Infinity? Isn't this called Infinity? Yeah, the album Infinity, probably like 1978 or 79 by the band Journey. Pretty hammered. Uh, the, the wax isn't. <clears throat> the wax is great. You know, some pretty bad shelfware, water damage, all kinds of stuff. But, dude, it'll spin great. The wheel in the sky keeps on turning. <laughs> yeah, I'll be singing that. I, that. That's a great album to clean the house too, right? Put on some of that and just clean the shit out of the house. I've seen this around forever. I've never listened to it. I've never owned it. Lee Michaels. Reading the back looked really intriguing. This album was one day in the making, blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of like explains how they recorded it all in one session on stage of him just kind of doing his thing. Don't know anything about it. Looks like, is it not like 1973 probably? Something like that. Yeah, Lee Michaels on a and Records. I'll check it out. Don't know anything about it. Uh, love this album. Got this in the fucking free bin, dudes. Free bin. The Almond Brothers. Brothers and sisters. Do, 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 do,
Fucking dope album, dude. It's, it's so cool. Totally clean. Free box. What? <laughs> Capricorn records. Probably, what, 1970? Do 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 Yeah, another super score. This was this was like three bucks in uh the Bennett Goodwill. Oh yeah. O C B C. Is that how you pronounce it? O C B C. I'm bad. Cool fucking band. Amazing, amazing art, of course. Roger Dean art. What a find for three dollars. It's not even that bad. A little bit of seam split right there and on the top inner edge like who cares you know what i mean the rest of it has held together amazingly what a cool band even cooler art yeah i just i've been i've just had this like on my speaker over here all week just been admiring it so beautiful i love this uh series too of the this uh the modern jazz quartet it was like milt jackson and like a bunch of other guys right couldn't believe i found this fucking as clean as it is for three bucks i love the cover the original atlantic swirl the modern jazz quartet and their album pyramid the big fucking cool stereo letters on that like canary yellow and it's fucking clean as a whistle dude really cool original inner look at that i'm so stoked i love milt jackson I'm big on the vibraphone jazz, man. Big on vibraphone in my jazz. Big on vibraphone in my fucking psychedelic rock and metal. <laughs> I love it. Pretty cool. Um, again, I'm coming clean about just buying, you know, uh, classical records simply because the art is dope. But any of these series, like if you get them from like the Nunsuch series of this, and this is that, um, what do they call it again? The Musical Heritage Society. Any of these Heritage Society pressings are just, oh, they're just absolutely fucking gorgeous and they're always just heavy weight cut deep micro grooves just man these things sound so awesome and i haven't ever had a copy of scheherazade so now i have scheherazade by rimsky yeah rimsky korsakov rimsky korsakov's scheherazade beautiful copy of that Oh, this was so cool. Three dollars for this. A bunch of live skit comedy Saturday Night Live album. I have no idea. I don't think this is like the first episode that ever aired or whatever, but it's obviously from the first season. The original cast members look at all, you know, Gilda Radner and Jane Curtin and Jim, <laughs> John Belushi, sorry, uh, Chevy Chase. Yeah, all of them. Garrett Morris. Really fucking cool. And it's like A and B side. There's tons of skit comedy all over this. Oh, it even tells you when Don Pardo comes <laughs> live from New York. <laughs> it's Saturday night. I had no idea. Don Pardo, he did Saturday Night Live, but he also did like he was the Jeopardy guy. So I just, his voice has just pervaded our culture for so long, for so many decades. Like you have no idea how much he did. He was like tons of newscasting for like ESPN. Uh, for all kinds of sports radio, you know, the Saturday Night Live voice, the Jeopardy, this is Jeopardy. So cool. So he's all over this, and yeah, this is going to be so much fucking fun to listen to. <laughs> Love that stuff. Oh, this is getting to the end, guys. This was really cool. Another anthology. I found so much, like, collections and cool anthology records this year. I don't know a ton about uh, this man as an artist. I just know how, you know, he, he how much of an icon he's always been of rock and roll in rock and roll and of course the uh traumatic you know whatever his death and how it kind of shook the world um yeah <laughs> but yeah I, buddy holly's the shit and so there's this really awesome gatefold uh double disc anthology collection of a bunch of old buddy holly stuff it's got this cool promo sticker on just great art you know great presentation super fucking cool <laughs> Everything's clean as a whistle. All the original inners and everything. Three dollars. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, okay, guys, just a couple left to show you. And these are a little bit different, but I'm just kind of showing off the new stuff that I've gotten in the last few weeks. Uh, because I think I've talked about this before. I do. Uh, I'm a maintenance guy. Um, and I uh, got kind of uh, recruited by my local, my favorite record store, House of Records. Shout out, Eugene, Oregon. Um, 
I do their maintenance work for them around the building, landscaping as well as like inside maintenance. Uh, they called me in and needed me to rebuild a couple of their record cabinets recently. So I went in, deconstructed them to a certain degree and then kind of reinforced them, used a lot of like, you know, the original existing lumber and stuff, but then, you know what I mean? So rebuilt a few cabinets for them, did a few hours worth of work and got some trade credit, cha-ching, and I managed to score some really fucking neat records that I've been wanting in my collection again. I haven't had a copy of this for a couple years. And I go through waves with them. Nothing, n neither good or bad ever. Um, these guys have always just kind of been kind of like, eh, whatever, kind of a band to me. But they're not, they're more now. They're just feeling like more. And I'm really getting into a point in my life where I'm starting to respect their music a lot, lot more than I ever did in the past. And just getting into little pockets of their uh, career and hearing like the songs that I've never heard getting outside of the greatest hits, not just listening on the radio anymore. I'm like putting it on the, the high fidelity stereo on classic, good, you know, analog sound. And these songs, these songs are so fucking good. I don't need to tell you guys this. I don't need to tell anybody this. Everyone knows the power of Led Zeppelin. Uh, Led Zeppelin's a pretty fantastic band. Everything they did for the world. Of course, the fourth, the So So album. Um, like I said, had it many, many, many times. But I paid $30 for an original press. This is a club pressing, I believe, like a 1971 club pressing. It sounds fucking phenomenal <laughs> from the beginning to the very end. And it's in absolutely mint condition. The original inner is in condition, mint condition, everything about it. It's pretty pretty amazing. Every other copy I've ever had has always just been beat to shit or, you know, had Bob's name written on it or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, the vinyl's always just scratched to shit. So now I have a damn near mint copy of this that will stay in my collection forever. Hooray for Led Zeppelin's 4. This was an impulse buy, but I've heard it before. I've heard the name before, and now I'm going to get intimate with it. The art is absolutely gorgeous. I love the genre. I can't remember the name of the band. What's the name of the band? Um, fuck me. It's a really cool band name, but I, it escapes me right now because it's one of those albums. They only wrote the name of the album <laughs> on the on the cover, and they didn't remind you of the name of their band. Somnivore, is that what it is? Yeah, Somnivore, the, the band Somnivore. And their breed of uh, what is considered, I guess, uh, dark folk. It's it's like kind of, it's got more undertones of like kind of like crazy dark metal, like in the background, so it's very foreboding, but it's got that like ambient dark, dark folk kind of sound. Uh, what people are calling like dungeon folk, dungeon synth or whatever, you know, but this doesn't really have much synth. Synth, it's more, you know, just kind of like more acoustic sounds um, and, you know, electric instruments, some drone and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, album's called uh, Golden Blood. Yes, Golden Blood. And I have been enjoying this. It's really fantastic. Cool, kind of witchy, witchy dark folk. I'm assuming from America. Yeah, like I said, impulse buy. Uh, nothing wrong with that when you're not spending real world money. It's just, you just use your know-how and skills to help people out. And they want to give you free shit for it. It's great. All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me. I love you all so very much. This is the last one I want to show you. You all know this album. You all know this artist and how wonderful and powerful it is. Come to find just recently, because I'm not an old head, I don't, you know... I wasn't even born when this album was released, so cut me some slack, assholes. Um, I'm not in the know about everything in rock and roll music and rock and roll history. Had no idea. I did know my favorite Bowie, I'm not a giant Bowie fan, but my favorite Bowie album has always been Low. I love that album for many, many reasons I'm sure you can figure out. I had no idea that Brian Eno had so much to do on this album that I think came out just a year later, just a year after Low, the Lodger album. I scored a fantastic copy, um, Mint, of the Lodger album by David Bowie, 1979. And like I said, Eno is fucking all over this. It sounds so fantastic. I walked into the record store and Greg was playing it. And I was like, oh, this is Lodger, right? I love this album. He's like, yeah, dude. Found a really great copy of it. It's absolutely mint. Original inner, through and through. He gave it to me for 20 bucks. It's fucking rad. Like I said, trade bunnies. So now I have a copy of Lodger by David Bowie.
beautiful, beautiful album. Yeah, kind of the only two I really need. Like I said, you know, a lot of it's on the radio. A lot of it I've just heard like forever, forever. Spiders from Mars and fucking Space Oddity and all of it, you know. Um, it's everywhere. And it's an 80s career. I mean, I grew up on Bowie. Bowie was gigantic in the 80s. And that's all my whole upbringing all was just, he was all over the radio. He was in every fucking film. He was doing everything. Um, and so this kind of like late 70s career is something that's kind of like ultimately still kind of new and cool to me. So I'm excited to have a copy of that. Uh, that's all my neat stuff, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, again, here at the Square the Circle Music Channel, your pal, your host, Aaron Major. Come back and visit me sometime, and I'll start getting a little more creative with it if I can, okay? Rather than just showing you a bunch of dumb crap that I bought for myself. Um, maybe we'll do, like, a focus piece on something pretty soon. We'll do a focus piece on, um, I don't know. You figure it out. Figure it out for me. Send me your advice. Say, hey, do a show on this because you seem, you know, like you might like it. I don't know. I'm up for suggestions, is my point. So, you guys are cool. Thank you for joining me. Uh, keep them clean. Peace in the crease. And uh, be good to each other. Later, assholes. <laughs>